Hi David. Um, right, we're going to run through your swim video from the other day. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm recording everything um, that the screen sees. So um, this allows me to bring in some video clips and website graphics and, and various things. So basically it's recording every single thing that I do um, and say. So what I'm going to do first of all then is um, play the video through, uh, your swim through, and just make some comments as we go. Um, and then we'll go through it again in a bit more detail and start to break it down into um, into the kind of the key areas and things we need to work on. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is play this uh, and make some comments as we go. Okay, first of all, you've got quite a nice rhythm to your stroke. Um, you're quite nice and smooth through the water. I don't know how you feel about your rhythm, but um, you've got a decent stroke rate there. And you're actually quite smooth. You're not creating a huge amount of splash. So that's, uh, that's a good, good place to start. Okay, the first thing I look for in, um, in swimmers, and the kind of stroke correction hierarchy, if you like, um, is breathing and relaxation, okay? Now, obviously you're breathing. You're breathing to both sides. You're bilateral breathing, which is good. A lot of people can't bilateral breathe, so you've already got a, you know, you're already off to a good start from that respect. Um, what we'll do is in a minute, it'll go to the underwater shots, and we'll be able to see how much you're holding your breath. I suspect you're holding your breath under the water. Um, now, what that can do is, um, if you're holding air in your lungs, it means that your um, the upper body is pulled towards the surface because of the buoyancy, and that has a tendency to make the legs sink. Um, let's roll this forward a little bit and see if we can see some of this. Okay, here we go. There. Let's wait to see if we can see a better shot. In fact, let's do it on the way back and it might uh, it might be a little bit clearer on the way back. Okay. So what I'm looking for here is for you to take a breath, which you are there. You're then rolling under the water. And we can't see it very well here. Right there. What we're looking for here is a constant stream of bubbles coming out of your nose and mouth. There's a few coming out there, but not a huge amount. And I suspect what you're doing is you're holding that air in your lungs here which is making the body sink down, um, or one of the things which is leading to it doing that. So I'm going to roll it through and see if we can see anything clearer. So you've just taken a breath on the right-hand side. There's no air there at all. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Still nothing coming out of your mouth. And then, did you see that bit there? Just as you go up to take a breath, watch the mouth here. That's there is the air starting to, that's not very good is it, get rid of that, starting to, um, starting to come out of your mouth. See, there we go, so you can see it here, look, starting to come out. So what you're doing is you're, you're taking a breath and you're holding that air in your lungs and you're exhaling and breathing in a single motion, okay? So that's the first thing we need to look at in terms of your stroke is the breathing, okay? Until you can get the breathing right, then um, you know it's difficult to move on to other things. You need to be constantly exhaling under the water. So we'll have a look at uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. Come back to that. So holding breath, okay. I'm just going to play this through again now.
Okay, the next thing I'm looking for here is the head position. Again, the head position is something which has a tendency, if your head is too high, has a tendency to lift, obviously you lift up to get your head out of the water to breathe, and then your legs to counterbalance, again, drop down into the water. I'm just going to take this back here so we can have a look at this. Now your head position isn't too bad. In fact, I've just stopped it there. Look, what you can see here is you can see your full face. It's not as high as some people, but you can see your full face. Ideally, what we want to be doing is having the water. That's what we should see. So the water line should be in between your goggles. Obviously, it would be down this this way. So. Um, and then what we're doing is looking to do is to create a bow wave with the forehead and then you breathe into the bow wave. But again, I'll have a look at that in a minute in a bit more detail. So lifting head. And we'll play this through. Okay, there we go. We can see your full face. Full face. You're breathing just to the one side this side, this time I notice. Every two seconds, just going to pause this. Right, I'm back, David. Sorry about this. The, the uh, perils of working from home. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, so we're looking at your head position. Um, and um, I noticed that you were just breathing to the one side on the, uh, on the other way up the length. And the way back, you're breathing bilaterally. So you can obviously choose um, you know, which method you use. Um, bilateral breathing is better. Um, if you can bilateral breathe, it adds a lot more balance and rhythm to the stroke. Um, it also adds a bit of extra flexibility to your breathing patterns, so you can breathe, you know, every third or fifth stroke. Um, so if you can bilateral breathe, then you know it's best to do that as much as you can. Right, let's run this through again. Okay, so we've mentioned head position, we've mentioned the breathing. What I'm doing now is stopping it here and to show you your body position. Um, because your head is quite high, it's causing your body position to come down in this kind of direction. Ideally, obviously, the closer to the surface you get, that would be the better, the better thing, and that's the kind of thing we need to aim for. But if we work on your breathing, um, holding your breath and your head position, this will naturally improve. If you imagine your head isn't so high and come down this direction, then this will automatically mean that the legs will travel up. Okay, you've got a decent kick there. It's got a bit of a break in it, um, and that's caused by your um, your stroke. Um, again, we can look at that further down the line. But you've got a decent kick there. It looks like you've got a reasonable amount of flexibility in your ankles, but again, that's something that can be worked on. Okay, and the same thing back here. We need to look at your catch, your arm entry and your catch. Your left arm particularly is coming in with a bent elbow. Um, we'll see this better as we come back uh, from above the water. You can hear my cat meowing his head off in the background there as well. Right, so I'm just going to shut this door, hang on a second. He always does that, he's getting old. Okay, so what we're looking at now is what happens to your arms um, in the beginning part of the stroke, so that what we call the front quadrant. The first thing I noticed as I paused it there is you should always have an arm in the front quadrant. Um, the, so you're either getting support or propulsion from that lead arm. At the moment, we've got nothing here at all, which means that your upper body well, um, basically, you've got nothing to support against when you breathe, which is why 
you're feeling you're having to lift your head higher. Um, I'll show you that in a second when we have a look at some more clips. Um, but yeah, your lead arm should be out here. It should be directly in front of you at this point. Now let's talk about your, your hand entry. What I mean by that is if we just ro roll this through, is your arm is coming, if you look at the angle of your arm, you're quite flat in the body here, and your arm has got this angle here, okay? Your body should, sorry, your arm should always be pointing in the direction you're going. When you're swimming, what you want is everything to be to be going in the direction you're swimming. So we don't want anything going sideways. Anything going sideways is going to be causing um, uh, causing you drag and causing you to slow down. So your arm entry, if you roll that through, it enters at an angle, and then you try and straighten it out. Okay. And then the other arm comes over, same thing. You can see it coming right across here. So it's pointing over this way rather than pointing straight ahead. Okay. So we need to look at your um, arm entry and then your catch and pull. So your arm enters the water. stays bent there and then you start to pull through that looks like a, like quite a decent catch angle there but you should be pulling directly back and what you what you can see here is your elbow is kind of slipping through the water here and then you're rolling right over to breathe your lead arm as i said to you before should be ahead to head of you here but it's collapsing down under the water, okay? And it's causing your legs to scissor kick, which again causes drag. Okay. These are all things which are fairly standard and things which we there's there's um, there are good drills for you to work on. These are things which you can really get your teeth stuck into, and you should see some quite visible changes um, reasonably quickly. Um, in terms of swimming stroke correction, very often, if you sort one key thing out, it'll it'll kind of progress along a fault line. So it will be that if you sort your if you if we improve your head positioning, your breathing, it'll change your overall body position and your, the depth of your legs. Um, if we change, if we look at your um, general body position, um, then that will lead to a better hand entry which will stop your legs scissor kicking because you'll have more support there. So everything kind of leads on to the other, to the next, okay? Okay, let's carry on playing this through. Then what we'll do afterwards is we'll go through it um, and we'll look at it again in a little more detail and I'll show you some drills that you can do and show you what it should look like ideally. Let's take that back a second there. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm just looking at the way your hand enters and then what happens under the water. So you're entering the water here. Your arm is coming over at an angle as we've discussed. And then you're pulling through that angle here. If I uh, if I measure that, should be between 100 and 120 degrees. As you can see, yours is 76, very close to the body. So you should be more. You know, that's that's where you should be. Okay. With your uh, with your arm and the pull through. So we have a look at the other one. Again, the same kind of thing. It kind of comes up quite close, 
It's not as bad as the uh, the right hand side. Comes through quite close and then pushes back. But again, this should be sorted out or should be improved when we start to look at the other uh, other elements of the stroke. Just play that through now. Okay, so same thing as before then, overhead, overhead view. We're looking at your arm entry and your body position. Because the arm entry is coming in quite flat, what you can see each time is you see how your arm is coming in at this quite a flat angle. You're dragging down quite a lot of air bubbles each time. Look, that's where all this is coming from, all these bubbles here. So it's causing, causing unnecessary lift and drag. Okay, good. So some good, uh, some good bits and bobs we can get stuck into there. Is Richard disappearing off? Um, right. So what we'll do now then is we'll go back to the beginning, and what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll have a look at some some um, sample videos uh, and various bits and bobs and try and try and get home the points that I've been making and, and, and some ideas and pointers about how you can improve it. Okay, first of all then, um, holding your breath. Um, if I show you, um, uh, this is the Swim Smooth video, Swim Smooth application which I use quite regularly for um, for swim coaching uh, and videos and things because it's got a, it's a, it's a, it's a great resource for video clips and drills and things like that. Um, right, let's just find see if we can find a decent clip. What I'll do is just play this through. This is um, Paul Newsom um, talking about breath holding. Whilst many people have been taught to hold on to the breath as a way to increase buoyancy in the water, of course, when viewed from this sideline position, all that extra buoyancy in the chest and lungs is just going to lift the swimmer higher up at the front and sink their legs lower down at the back, exactly the opposite of what you want. The swimmer should be exhaling smoothly the whole time their face is underneath the water. This helps to remove buoyancy in the chest and lungs and almost acts like a seesaw, lifting the hips and legs up higher at the back. Many people assume that swimming is limited by how much air you can get in. However, if you're not clearing your lungs properly underneath the water, the time that you have to breathe in becomes very much just a forced breath out and then a rushed breath in. If you feel like you're struggling with your breathing, it's highly likely you're holding onto your breath underneath the water and that makes the whole process feel that much harder than it really needs to do. Okay, simple explanation. Um, now, one of the best drills for um, getting used to releasing the breath, uh, your breath from your lungs um, is the sink down drill. Just play this through for you. This sink down exercise is a great way to judge just how comfortable you feel in the water. We once tried to sink down to the bottom of the pool just by exhaling from either the mouth or the nose or the combination of the two, not using your arms and legs to push yourself down and cheating. If you feel like you're sighing in the water or deflating the lungs, you should be able to sink down quite comfortably. Many swimmers struggle with this exercise simply because they don't feel relaxed enough to let go of the air in the chest and lungs and allow themselves to sink nice and easily down to the bottom of the pool. Okay, so that's a simple drill where you breathe out and you exhale and you kind of almost sigh out as you sink down to the bottom of the pool. Um, it takes a bit of getting used to and it's worth practicing. You'll get used to um, what kind of rate of exhalation you need to give to allow a nice smooth sink down so what you're aiming for is every time you take a breath you turn and put your head back in the water um, and then you're having a constant exhalation of air until it's time to take the next breath if i show you a clip here 
um, of um, John O'Van Hazel. If I remember rightly, I think this shows. I think this shows. Um, let's see if we can find an underwater clip of this. Here we go. Yeah, no. Hmm. See if we can find another one. Let's try um, try Cassie Pan. See if we can see her breathing style. She's actually holding a breath slightly as well there. Um, let's see if we can find another clip. So you can see this constant stream of bubbles. She holds it, actually holds her breath very early on, and then she starts to breathe out halfway through. What you should be doing, this is an elite, what you should be doing is constantly breathing out all the time. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at then is um, head positioning. This is quite a simple thing. Um, this picture here you can see, ideally what you want to do is have um, your head so that when you breathe, You've got one goggle out of the water, they call it Popeye. Sorry about this, it's not very smooth, but uh, as you can see what I'm doing, Popeye breathing. Here we go. Let me play this video for you. This is the very simple way to demonstrate what we call Popeye breathing. As I go to take a breath to the side here, to the right hand side, Notice how one eye stays underneath the water and the other eye pops out. If I paused the frame here, we'd actually see me taking a breath to the side with my mouth angled like Popeye would be chewing his spinach out on the side. As it were. Now, this is a really good thing for you to focus on, almost like a split screen view. One eye under the water, one eye out the top, and just angling your mouth like Popeye chews his spinach on the side, just enough to clear your mouth out of the water just beside the little bow wave and trough that forms behind that bow wave to take a breath into the side. Doing so by keeping the head low whilst you're breathing helps to keep your bum and legs up in a nice horizontal position in the water. Okay, so pretty much as we've discussed, um, if I run this through here and try and, uh, try and, there we go. So this is the ideal head position. You know how I drew the line on before? and that line was dissecting the goggles. You can see the bow wave here around Paul's head, um, creating this kind of trough. That's the head position you should have. What you're actually doing is you're lifting your head right up out the water so we can see your full face here. Um, also, what I did mention before is your lead arm. You see Paul's lead arm is still there in the water. And that's allowing him to kind of almost lean on that arm and gives him the support for him to just turn his head slightly. What your arm is doing is collapsing down under the water, which means that you're sinking down, your body's actually sinking, but in order to take a breath is you're having to make an extra effort to lift your head up to, um, to get the breath you need. So if we just go back then, So we've spoken about um, we've spoken about um, holding the breath, and we can do the sink down drills for that to try and get uh, get more effective at that and breathing out constantly. We've we've noticed that you're lifting your head out of the water and how you should be kind of practicing on the Popeye breathing. Now, one thing you can do as well um, is you can practice where 
you know, practice moving your head around and seeing how that affects your head position, sorry, your body position. So you could do a length where you look straight down. You could do a length where you're looking 45 degrees ahead. You could look, do a length where you're looking a little bit further ahead and then another length where you're looking forwards almost. And just experiment to see how that actually affects your body position. Um, all of these will change your body position. In actual fact, if you um, look further ahead, because your head is close to the surface, you may well actually find that it's easier for you to breathe like that. And you may feel like you've got a higher head, um, but you're not actually having to lift your body so high out of the water to get a breath. Um, so these, these, it's worth experimenting, just doing a few lengths of your head in each position, just trying to see how that affects the way you swim. Um, the last thing I want to look at for now, really, is your body position. Now, the main cause of your um, body position uh, problem at the moment is your, you've got sink, you've got a, you've got a a tendency to have quite a low body position in a similar way to this chap here is your bottom is quite a long way below the surface and your legs follow on down. The main thing for me is um, because of the way your your arms are entering the water they're not providing any stability at the front end. So what we need to look at for you is and, and in fact what I'll do is I'll give you a um, I'll bring you up on here and I'll compare just to emphasize the point. Okay, so what I'm talking about here, let's try and find the right place in your clip here. Here we go. So what I'm looking at here is when your arm comes over, let's take it back a little bit. Bear me two seconds, just find the right place in the clip. Okay. So what I'm talking about here, and I mentioned this before, is the front quadrant. At the moment, you don't have any support at the front end of the stroke, which again is meaning that you have to lift your head super high to try and get the breath. If you look at Jono here, Here we go. Now, you can see him here. In fact, if I want to do is run it through so you can see the arm entry. So his right arm enters the water, spears forwards, whereas remember yours was coming, yours is coming over, over in this direction. Look, look at the difference. Okay, so you're pointing over in that direction, he's pointing straight ahead. So if we roll it through, look where his arm is, it stays high, stays straight. He turns and breathes, his arm is still there. Okay, That means he can provide support for himself just to turn his head and take the breath he needs. If we have a look at the way your arm moves, enters the water, it's already on its way down. It's already on its way down at that point. That's what we do is we run it through until you breathe. Take a breath. There we go. So your arm, you can see the arm pushing through the water. You can see all the bubbles that are being pulled down. It's pushing through the water. And it have, you haven't got that support. So if you get his, your arm in a similar position, your um, recovery arm in a similar position to Jono's here, look. Look where his lead arm is. Look where yours is. It's under the water. It's dropped down. Okay. We need to get that sorted out because that's going to make a huge difference to you. It's going to make a huge difference to you um, to provide that lead arm with support. So the best thing to do for this is to do what we call the kicking on the side drill. Um, let's have a look at drills. Kicking on the side drill. Um, blah, 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 blah. Kick on the side drill. Here we go. Have a watch of this.
The kick on your side drill is a mainstay drill of the Swim Smooth program. It's a multi-purpose drill that develops your posture in the water, your alignment and your catch setup technique. Kicking on your side has been used in swimming for many years and originally used to either promote good leg kick efficiency and or promote rotation. To practice this drill well, push off in that torpedo position and immediately pull out so you're actually kicking on your side. Left arm extended forward, right arm held loosely down by your side, almost just down by your hips. Have your eyes looking down towards the bottom of the pool, blowing a long continuous stream of bubbles. Turn your head to the side to take a breath whenever you need to, but otherwise have your attention looking down towards that black line. When you're kicking on your side, think about drawing your shoulder blades together and back to allow great alignment of your middle finger straight down the pool, pointing straight forward in front of the same shoulder. One of the most commonly overlooked issues with this particular drill is for that lead arm to be collapsing or just hung loosely in the water. The lead arm needs to have a sense of rigidity about it. Fingertips below the wrist and wrist below the elbow. Otherwise, if you collapse onto your elbow and allow the hand to rise up towards the surface of the water, you'll effectively be pushing yourself backwards and sinking your legs. Notice how the palm of the hand is looking down towards the bottom of the pool, not with the palm turned out towards the side as is commonly seen when people try this exercise for the first time. Keeping the palm of the hand looking down with the fingertips angled slightly down towards the bottom of the pool allows good connection with the water, a nice stable base. Okay, so we can see from this drill, what it allows us to do is to practice keeping that lead arm directly out in front of you and straight good rotation and it allows us to, it teaches your body to breathe while your lead arm is still there. So he takes when a breath, on your side, the arm is staying there. Your shoulder blades together and back. For this drill you will need fins um, and ideally you could do with someone actually watching you while you do it because it's very easy for this lead arm to um, to drop either drop down out of position or to actually come up is more popular more common um, so that the elbow will drop and the hand comes up in this direction it's uh, it's quite important that you get someone to keep an eye on you while you're doing this drill but this will allow you to concentrate on keeping that lead arm out straight keeping it high and having the support for you to turn your head and to breathe there you go you can see you're taking a breath and the, the arm stays straight so that will start to target this area here with the arm dropping. So if you think about it now, what we're looking at here is, is all these elements which are causing the body to, to drop down at the back end and the front end to come up. So we're losing the support which we've spoken about doing the kicking on the side drill. Um, and we'll start working on the oxygen in the lungs by hold, not holding your breath anymore and the head position. Those three things combined should make quite a large difference to your, your stroke initially. There's other things that we can work on, but you know we can kind of come to those as and when. And a lot of the other issues you've got, or some of the other issues you've got with the stroke, will be addressed um, once we get the front end of the stroke sorted out. Just a progression then from there would be the 616 drill. And I'm sure you've probably done these um, through the swimming club. 616 drill is a progression, I won't play the whole thing, but it's a progression of the kicking on the side where you take six kicks, you take a stroke onto the other side, and then you take another six kicks. So it starts to introduce the stroke. This is the 616 drill, which is a development of the kick on your side drill. It's a building block of the stroke here, as we're introducing a single stroke to swap the swimmer from side to side. Okay. Um, and then you move again onto the 636, where you have three strokes in between. The 636 drill is a further development of our side kicking exercises. With 616, we introduced a single stroke to swap sides. With 636, we're taking three strokes in a row to swap you onto the other side of your stroke. 
This allows you to really feel like you're building back up into the normal freestyle stroke. Almost think of it as normal bilateral breathing, with just a period extended out on your side whilst you take that breath in, ensuring that you remember to align your stroke, shoulders back and chest forward. Okay, so that's a progression from there. Um, and I think that's probably the best place for us to start, um, David. Um, we can look at your arm entry, but again, that will improve as we start to look at the improve the head position. Um, a similar drill for uh, that could look at your um, arm entry. It's very similar to the 616, 636 is the broken arrow drill. So if I just quickly show you this, um, you can see how we can start to improve the, the arm entry as well. The Broken Arrow Drill is a relatively new addition to the Swim Smooth Drill Set. It's a fantastic drill to help loosen off tight upper backs and shoulders. When performing this exercise, again start off by kicking on the side. Raise your arm straight up towards the sky. Pause for two seconds and then spear into the water. That's essentially where the Broken Arrow name comes from. Okay, so you're kicking on the side and then you're, you're introducing a nice controlled hand entry and the final one I want to show you just for now if I can find it is the javelin drill now this is where I recommended the um, freestyler hand paddles um, I'll just play this through and then it'll it'll demonstrate um, what I'm talking about here let me in fact, I'll fast forward, you I'll fast forward this because he spends about Let's 10 kick. minutes talking at the beginning of this is that we know from experience only having the sequence away there you from go. I told you half of it was him talking. Now all critical cross over in a minute hopefully. Oh yeah. Here we go. So the same as kicking on the side, but with the paddle on the lead arm. Now the shape of the paddle it has a keel. Uh, make sure that, that lead arm stays straight because the keel, you can feel the keel move if you don't say straight. It also provides an extra bit of stability for you to breathe. Okay, so they're the, um, they're the main things we need to work on for now. We can also uh, move on to improving the catch and pull through um, later on, uh, and also your leg kick. Um, but until we get the body positioning right and the breathing right, and that's that's the best place for us to start. So, um, yeah, in summary then, you know, I'll build those drills into your swim sets. Um, if you want some one-to-one -one swim coaching with me, obviously just you just need to ask. Um, you will need some fins um, and hand paddles uh, and a pull boy ideally as well for a little bit further along the way. Um, so again, if you want me to get those for you, let me know. I think you've already got some fin um, some paddles ordered, but I'm not sure about the fins. I'd have to check on that, so let me know. Um, and I think that's it, really. Once you get stuck into those drills, um, then you'll start to see some really positive changes because you do say, like I said at the beginning, right at the beginning, you do have a good rhythm to your stroke, and it's just a case of, um, of getting the, the positioning right and the breathing right, and you'll be good to go. Um, so apologies that it's taken us so long to get to this point, David, but I hope you found that, that video useful. I know it's not super slick but it's the way I do it is quite a good way of demonstrating a whole load of points and bringing in the video clips and all that kind of thing. Um, so um, I hope you found it useful. If you want to give me any feedback on, uh, on what you thought that'd be great um, and um, yeah I think that's about it. Okay speak to you soon.